Well, Wednesday is here, but Wednesday is a special day because today we receive our first tranche of the COVID-19 vaccines. And it is a momentous event, actually. Uh, there's been a bit of a delay as far as that uh, is concerned. But we'll be connecting, uh, bringing you live information with regard to what is happening at the Kotoka International Airport. But in the meantime, as the vaccines hit uh, our country, we'd like to find out from you, with all the misconception and on the back of what we just gave you with regard to dispelling fake news when it comes to COVID-19, what, how much do you know about this vaccine? Are you going to take a shot given the opportunity? What do you think about these vaccines? Do share with us uh, by calling that number 0302-211-691 extension 2. 0302 211 691 extension 2. What, what are your frequent you know, questions, the, the questions on your mind when it comes to these vaccines? You can share with us by calling that number or by sending us messages on social media with the hashtag AMShow, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. But to you know, set the ball rolling, we're going to be interacting with Dr. Yo Bidiakwe, an immunologist with WACBIP at the university of Ghana. Dr. Bediako, a very good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Benjamin. Thank you so much for uh, speaking to us this morning. Uh, how, how, I mean, what, what are your expectations, especially today as we have our first tranche of vaccines? What's the feeling like for you, especially as this is uh, your area of specialization? Oh, I mean, I think it's a great day. It's an exciting day. Um, a lot of work has gone into securing these first vaccines. Um, and it's a great sign. I think Ghana is one of the first, if not you know, one of the first African countries um, to take delivery of vaccines. Uh, we're not the first, but we're certainly in the top, certainly the top ten, maybe in the top six, mm. in terms of vaccines being available. Um, and I think it, it it's hopefully the beginning of of, of great things. Um, these vaccines alone will not be enough to vaccinate everybody. But I believe we're getting about 600,000 doses. So that should be enough to cover a large segment of phase one, which is the healthcare workers um, and some um, people with uh, either underlying or the elderly. Um, and I believe some security agency personnel and, um, and government personnel. So I think it's a great start. What is going to happen, though, is it has to be, you know, it has, the momentum has to be maintained. We hope that we receive more vaccines in short order. Um, and that the whole vaccine rollout plan can really kick off um, to really begin to effectively vaccinate as much of, of Ghana as we possibly can. Now, how much of an impact do you feel this first tranche is going to make, especially uh, considering the fact that a lot of our medical or frontline workers uh, have been compromised when it comes to COVID-19. Uh, some of the health institutions are struggling with even the PPE and all of this. How much of an impact do you feel this is going to make with the target groups? Oh, I think this is going to be, be huge. I mean, we, you know, our health workers are at the front line. They are the ones who are in many ways the most um, at risk. And so being able to vaccinate them provides them with a measure of protection um, beyond just giving them PPE. So I think this is, this is massive. Um, this, this is the way it's supposed to be. But as I said, you know, the, the protection will be, will be only partial or be short-lived if we cannot continue to vaccinate other segments of the population. Um, mm. Vaccination is only going to work if we get a large enough proportion of Ghanaians uh, vaccinated so that we can break transmission. Uh, because these vac the vaccine protection will likely not last forever. It may last maybe even as short as 8 to 12 months. Um, so we need to make sure we vaccinate as many people as possible so that there's no longer any virus around to infect people when the vaccines begin to wear off. Right. Now, uh, one thing that has been on my mind, especially with the kind of vaccine we're getting from AstraZeneca, it is a two-shot vaccine. Now, Looking at the dynamics where you have to take one and then take another one, uh, you know, sometime down the line. The, those who are going to get these initial uh, shots, just how much immunity uh, are they going to get in terms of percentage of uh, effectiveness against the coronavirus? Can, can you share what the dynamics are with us? Okay, so I think the data suggests that the first shot, um, you actually don't get protection immediately. For AstraZeneca, I think it's 28 days 
after the vaccine before immunity begins to set in. So 21 to 28 days when you begin to see immunity appearing. And even then, with the first shot, it's, it's below 50%. You really need the second shot to now take you above 80%, which is the maximal efficacy of the vaccine. So after the first shot, in fact, initially after the first shot, you're not protected. So, you know, mask wearing, hand washing, social distancing are going to be with us for a long time, even as we start vaccination. Um, but then after, you know, after about 21, 28 days, you begin to see some community setting in. But then you need the second dose, really, to get you to, you know, the, I think for AstraZeneca, it's around 86% um, effectiveness. So, you know, you do really need the second dose. People should not think they are covered after the first dose. There's a reason why um, the government is, you know, you, you, there's a reason why that you have to have a second dose. Um, your your protection is really only maximal after the second dose. And, and what, what is the time frame uh, we're looking at when it comes to, I mean, I remember taking the hepatitis B, you know, shots way back in time. And there was a specific time, you know, period within which to take the vaccines to get full protective uh, cover against uh, that. So w what are the timelines here? How many months before you take the next jab? So for, it varies from vaccine to vaccine. For AstraZeneca, the gap is anywhere from 4 to 12 weeks. So it would be anywhere from a month to three months um, between shots. Um, there's evidence suggesting that six weeks and up is the maximal time. So, um, yeah, after the first dose, I'm not entirely sure what Ghana Health Service, what, uh, what regimen Ghana Health Service is specifically going to use. But the data that is available suggests that for AstraZeneca, you're looking at no less than four weeks um, and likely a little bit more than four weeks. So. I would say anywhere from 6 to 12 weeks is when people should expect to get their second dose. What are the risks? In other words, if you take the first shot and don't take the second, what are the risks? I mean, the main risk is you're just not as protected. Um, mm. You know, you are, you are not fully immunized, um, and that would mean that you are still at risk of COVID-19. You know, you, you would have... So, it, 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 you know, it simply puts... The immunization is given in two doses. Um, one dose is not enough, um, so you must get the second dose. Otherwise, you're not, you, you cannot consider yourself immunized. And, you know, considering all these dynamics, uh, a lot of people have, you know, suspicions. And I know you've shared your thoughts on uh, some of those. But even before I get to those, uh, you are a frontline worker yourself. Are you getting a jab? Um, yes, if I if 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 I am offered one, I will certainly take one. If you're um, offered one, if I'm offered one, yes. I don't know the. I mean, I'm not a clinician. I'm I'm a researcher. I'm in the, I'm in the lab. I don't quite. You know, it'll be up to the Ghana Health Service. They will have to segment. I'm guessing first it will be doctors and nurses in the emergency rooms who are in direct contact with patients, and then it will filter down to the likes of us who are involved in the frontline work but are not necessarily directly seeing patients. Mm. But the moment my number is called, I'll be right there to receive a job. So uh, the, has there not been any communication with regard to your being on any list? Uh, to I get have a job? not yet received any communication, but I'm waiting. I'm waiting for that call. So uh, I'll, 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 we'll see what. I, I, I don't yet know if anyone has actually been uh, contacted yet. I think they are probably still um, setting up the, the plan. But um, I'm sure now the vaccine is here. It'll be a matter of, you know, quickly rolling it out and it'll, it'll begin to, to flow. I know they're going to segment Greater Accra and Ashanti regions first. Um, so we shall see what, what happens in Accra. Right. Now, let's address some of what you've been talking about for a long time now. Those conspiracy theories, fears of people when it comes to taking the COVID-19 vaccine, even if they were offered. Uh, just today in the Ghanaian Times newspaper, talk about some people who feel, you know, this could be some attempt at, like the, the usual conspiracy theories, that they don't trust, uh, you know, uh, the, the vaccine so far, that they feel it could be targeted at black people. And there's a lot of uh, fake news on social media. What would you say to our viewers this morning with regard to the potency of the vaccine? Oh, I would say what I've always said, that these vaccines have been, um, have been tested rigorously. Um, they are demonstrated to be safe. Um, they are demonstrated to be effective. Um, and they are already being used around the world. AstraZeneca vaccine is the vaccine that is largely being used in the UK. 
There are many Ghanaians who live in the UK who have already received this vaccine. I know some of them personally. They are friends of mine also in the US who are Ghanaian doctors who have also received this, uh, who have received the COVID vaccine of, of one kind or another. Um, and there is no evidence that it has any um, specific side effects in, in African people. So, um, you know, this vaccine is safe. It has, you know, AstraZeneca, um, millions of doses have so far been administered, and there are very few reports of any um, sort of very severe um, uh, negative uh, side effects. You know, majority of the so-called side effects are a little bit of pain at the site of injection, maybe a little bit of redness, uh, maybe a bit of fever. And these are normal um, side effects of nearly every vaccine that you, you would take. Um, so they're not unusual and they're not life-threatening. They're not really debilitating. You know, they're gone after a day or so. So I think people should rest assured um, and, and should should be more worried about not getting the vaccine than worried about taking the vaccine. But how about the other side, Doc? A few people who, you know, across the world have had some reactions to some of these vaccines. Uh, how do we, you know, view I those? Mean, yeah, that, that is, once again, with any drug, any medication, any medical, you know, you know, device, there's always going to be a, a small fraction of people who have some reaction. That is, that is almost unavoidable. Um, but that is why we, are, we, we have very good tracking of, of any adverse events to document these and make sure to, to see whether or not there's any, any worrying trend and anything that has to, be, has to be followed. So far, like I said, the number of people who've had any adverse events has been really, really small. I mean, if you think about the sheer millions of doses that have been, have been, have been administered, the number of sort of quote-unquote severe adverse reactions has been in the, has been you know in less than probably less than 20. I mean, it's just a few people out of millions. Majority of the so-called side effects have been normal side effects of vaccines, which would be, you know, you, you stuck a needle into somebody's arm, there might be some pain. That has nothing to do with what is in the vaccine. If you injected water, the reaction would probably be the same. Mm. So I think we have to realize that when they say side effects, many of these side effects are really, really mild. Um, and are just normal side effects of typical vaccination. They have nothing to do with the fact that the COVID vaccine. Um, and so there's really very little to, to worry about. Um, you know, the, and so I think we should be more worried, like I said, we should be more worried about the disease than about the vaccine. Okay, right before I pose my final question to you, Doc, let me just remind all of you watching us uh, this morning that we'd like to have your frequently asked uh, questions. Hopefully, Dr. Bediakon has answered most of them. But if you have any further questions, shoot them to us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, join news, uh, hashtag AM show. You can also call us 0302-211-691, extension 2. But finally, Doc, now... What would be the danger? I, I want us to get a full understanding of this. What would be the danger if some people played hide and seek with the vaccine? Let's say people were offered, you know, jabs of the vaccine, but intentionally refused to take it. What effect could that have on our population? So the, the problem, you know, as we said repeatedly, we only will get on top of this pandemic if we vaccinate a large enough proportion of our population to break mm -hmm. transmission. Now, that number is anywhere from 60 to 75 percent. So we have to vaccinate a lot of Ghanaians. We have to vaccinate well over 20 million Ghanaians to be able to hit that target. So if too many people dodge and refuse to take the vaccine, then it limits our ability to hit herd immunity. Um, and when that happens, then the virus transmission will continue. And as I said, the immunity will only last a certain period of time. So if we still have virus floating around when the vaccine wears off, then we're right back where we started. So it's a very, you know, it's, it's very, it's critical that people do not avoid receiving this vaccine, that enough people accept to take the vaccine and basically do so to protect themselves and also protect their families. Um, because, you know, there are certain segments of the population who we may not vaccinate. We may not vaccinate very young children. We're currently not vaccinating pregnant women. But if we vaccinate enough of of, of, of the other segments of the population, then that protection will extend to the segments that we are not vaccinating. And that is the principle of the community. Okay, well, if we don't achieve that, mm. then there will be, you know, we basically we'll still have virus circulation and would have achieved nothing. We'll be crossing over shortly to uh, the Kotokai International Airport where we'll bring you live scenes. In fact, you can see uh, some of that in your shot now of that delivery of vaccines. But uh, just because you mentioned this, Doc, I just want some understanding. You said when the vaccine wears off. What exactly did you mean by that? 
Well, I mean that for this vaccine, all the data suggests that the immunity will not be lifelong. It will not be, you know, it will probably last no more than a year. Um, and that is, that is the year. vaccine so, shots we are going to be taking, the, the AstraZeneca and all the others. It won't last yes, for more than a year. All the others suggest that immunity to this, you know, from this vaccine will probably be about maybe 12 to 18 months. Um, so beyond that time, the vaccine will no longer have, a, 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 will no longer be protected. So if we need to, so this is why we need to vaccinate quickly and broadly so that we can cover enough people within that window so we break the back of the pandemic. And then when it wears off, we have nothing to worry about because there's no more virus anymore. So, so that also means that we must still keep up the search to get a cure because all these vaccines across the world that we are giving will eventually wear off and we could have another COVID pandemic, maybe a worse one because the virus keeps mutating. Um, well, that is, you know, that is, a, that is always an, an issue. I mean, even with flu, you have a vaccine and you have to find a new vaccine. Um, so, no, I mean, in many ways, the vaccine is, it, it's, it's not a cure in that it does not treat, but the vaccine is the way to get rid of COVID-19. Yes, there may be future pandemics that we have to deal with, but it would not be this particular virus. Um, so this is really the, in a way, this is the end all. This is better than a cure. This is prevention. If we vaccinate enough people, we will not no longer have to worry about this. Um, and we can go back to life as normal. Now, of course, um, another virus may emerge one day, but we hope it will help you for a very long time. Um, so the vaccine really is the final solution, um, but it has to be administered properly, and it has, that is why the whole world is having to vaccinate. If the whole world indeed does pull this off and does vaccinate enough people, COVID-19 will simply be a memory. Dr. Albediako is an immunologist uh, with WACBIP at the University of Ghana. Doc? Thank you so much for your time with us this morning. And uh, so that has been our discussion. In case you had any questions on your mind, hopefully that has answered uh, quite a number of them. If you still have further questions, well, you can always call that number, 0302-211-691, extension 2. 0302-211-691, extension 2. Or send us a message on social media with your concerns. So we'll be crossing over as and when possible, uh, to the Kotoka International Airport uh, to get the feed when it comes to what exactly is happening there uh, in reference to that first tranche of the vaccines that we're getting in this country. Of course, the target, uh, mainly those on the very front line when it comes to fighting COVID-19, uh, frontline healthcare workers, among others, who are going to be getting uh, the jab. And it has also been mentioned, the information minister designate, making it clear that some, not all, uh, public officials are going to publicly take the jab uh, just to let people know that it is safe, that it is effective, and that all of us ought to take it. In fact, I would be willing to take a jab. You know, uh, we all want to get protected. But like Dr. Bediako has been mentioning, this jab is not a foolproof system. Uh, to prevent uh, the, the virus. In fact, you need the two shots when it comes especially to AstraZeneca's uh, you know, shots. You need the double dose to get over 80% effectiveness or efficiency when it comes to uh, protection. We do know that the Johnson & Johnson jab is just one kind of like what Israel is developing, uh, supposed to be ready sometime in June or July. But let's check out some of what you've been sharing with us on uh, social media. And we have Facebook. And some of you, uh, you know, have been sharing your thoughts. But the question basically is, Ghana is expecting about 500,000 doses of the AstraZeneca vaccines to be delivered today, uh, ongoing, at the Kotoka International Airport in Accra. What is your take? And let's, uh, th th that was just the statement put up. But... Matt Biat says uh, all of them should be given to medical doctors, nurses, laboratory technicians, and other key medical staff who need and uh, are willing to take the jabs. No politician should get a dose. In fact, uh, that sort of resonates with what some people have jokingly put on social media that uh, maybe we should let the politicians rather get the doses first in case there are any, uh, you know, elements in there that we don't want. So that would be the opposite of what Mabia actually sent. 
Redeemer Hajjo says, we ordinary Ghanaians won't take the COVID-19 vaccine. Now, that's a worry, um, Redeemer, because like Dr. Bediakon has been sharing, we all need to take the jab, as many of us as possible, 60, 70, 75 percent of us need to take the jab in order to ensure that we at least achieve some sort of herd immunity. Now, if you get the opportunity and refuse to take it and you contract the virus, you complicate matters for everybody. Mitch Greenwood says, I hope there would be less than 25 officials at this ceremony and there would be no budget on the event. Now, that's a concern there when it comes to uh, monetary matters. Alumu Jata, if we can just scroll up a bit so we can check out what Alumu Jata is saying. Ghanaian media's dear, okay, I can't read what you added there. Um, unfortunate but unpalatable uh, statements. Aristotle Nano says the politicians and their families will take the AstraZeneca vaccine and give the Russian Sputnik uh, 5 vaccine to the ordinary Ghanaian. Hmm. Well, that's not what we know thus far. So um, let's put the right information out there. Password. Interesting Facebook name. You say 500,000 and this one too calls for a ceremony. Ah, uh, well. Ah. Bright Adams says, this one to ceremony. Hey, I hope the taxpayers' money was not uh, used. Uh, so a lot of you, interestingly, also focusing on, you know, money matters when it comes to this bit. Tre Donald says, so Ghana is sending people to the airport this morning to dance Adua to welcome the arrival of a vaccine. Shaking my head. Uh, okay, so the jab's coming on social media. Jeff Abraham says, um... Lies, even common watch it two cities cry. Um, let's let's refine it. Our president uh, could not give it to Ghanaians. Okay, so let's let's take it out. I think you're going back to the lockdown and all of that. Uh, Hassan Madrid uh, says the masses are not enlightened. It's sad. Now that's a genuine concern. A lot of people espousing thoughts that are not backed by science or evidence. Theo EA says, did I actually see coronavirus and ceremony there? Why a ceremony? Like, really? Ghana. And Theo, your thoughts reflected by many others who have shared their thoughts with us this morning. Robbie Ahim says, unnecessary. Use the herbs and save your life. But like uh, Dr. Dwedu has been sharing, be careful uh, with those, especially as they are not uh, recommended. You don't have FDA approval for them, do you? Senior Owusu Jao says, uh, Ghana cry, why? Why don't you wait and announce when you receive it? Uh, what is this? Okay. Barbara Boating, and uh, she says, with fanfare, fanfare. And uh, yeah, pomp and fanfare, if you like. Josh, I have blood twist. With a ceremony on arrival? Um, well, yes. More theory says, our ears are in pain. We are tired of hearing the same story. Um, more, where the same story would be what exactly? Or is it COVID-related news? We must keep talking about COVID, though, because it is here with us. And I'm sure you can also see on your shot what exactly is happening with that uh, plane that just hit our airport, Emirates flight. Isaac Corsa says, who discovered African? Um, I don't know, but um, that's, I don't know what angling you have to that question. Granting Kwabana says, what are the side effects? Well, from what we've seen so far... Uh, pretty much uh, none, though, like uh, Dr. Bediako was just sharing, some people would definitely, a minute group of people will uh, experience some effects, but most people so far across the world, none. Uh, this one says, there was, a, there was a comment before this, that I think we're saying we don't need it. Bird Boy says we don't need it. Actually, Bird Boy, we do. We do, badly. Clement uh, says, fanfare, really? Richard Sylvester, so Nana, um, I'm sure you're referring to our president. Okay, let's just skip that one. Nanapia says 5,000 will be enough for the ministers, the presidential staffers, and the appointees. So you are actually crunching the numbers and looking at how many they will require. Asia Dukateke says, Minikreu. Okay, so I'm sure that has to do with the ceremony with which it's being greeted. I guess for most of you, you just have just wanted us to take stock of it and start doing what is needed, vaccinating those target categories rather than uh, the ceremony that is actually backing it up. Spencer Notti says ceremony. Okay, so that's uh, generating a lot of talk. That's also the thinking of Martin who says, ah, so ceremony self day inside. Uh -huh. Yeah, it did, it did, it did. Wordsmith Della also bemoaning that ceremony. 
Alfred Nano Owusu sends a bit of a lengthy one. We'll try to see how much of it we can read. This pandemic is proving to be the world's largest IQ test. The amount of conspiracy theories people actually believe just shows how, let's say, uninformed our society has become. From blaming 5G for the virus to claiming that the vaccine will change your DNA or that it's all a conspiracy headed by Bill Gates for a new world order. How have we so easily given up on common sense and critical thinking to the point where people claim things that are physically impossible and share it as though they were fact? All right. I see some words in there that I can't use, but maybe this paragraph, not to mention how religious circles have become the core for the spread of these theories. Isn't discernment supposed to be one of the gifts of the spirit? We religious folk are embarrassing ourselves and tarnishing the good reputation we have built up in the past. Pretty lengthy post, um, but that is, uh, you know, some, some pretty interesting information that you have shared. There And there's a bit of a response, I see, to what was posted. Let's see whether we can get that response quickly. Uh, we've rather gone to the homepage of uh, Georges Tutu. But um, so we're, we're still bringing you live coverage of what is transpiring at the Kotokai International Airport with regard to the COVID-19 pandemic and that delivery of our first tranche, our first batch of the vaccines quite a number of them hundreds of thousands of them and you can see there uh, some more scenes with regard to what is transpiring currently at the airport and so we'll be seeing a lot of these officials and yes indeed there is a ceremony that is uh, going to uh, take place let me get to that response from george tutu who says we've lived with herbs since the beginning of time we claim we've got the best doctors in the world, yet can't produce a vaccine. Funny, our doctors are only... I don't think that's fair, so I'm not going to uh, read the rest of it, because I think it takes quite a, a jibe. It is quite a jibe at our doctors. Uh, all right, so those are some of the thoughts you've been sharing on the back of, uh, you know, the COVID-19 vaccine delivery today as it is actually happening as we're bringing you the live scenes from the Kotoka International Airport. You can also call through and share your thoughts uh, 0302 -211 extension 2, 0302 -211 extension 2. If you have the opportunity, would you take a shot? What are your questions? What is on your mind? You can share them with us right here on the AM show and of course those live scenes we're bringing you from the Kotoka International Airport. We're activating the phone line so do call and let's jaw jaw. Let's not war war about this matter. There's nothing to fight over. It's merely sharing ideas on it and so far as Dr. Bediako has been sharing, proven fact, these vaccines are helping people across the world. If you get the opportunity you might as well want to take it. I will take it if I had the opportunity. I don't know about you, but you can share your concerns if you think you aren't going to take it. Why? Having listened to Dr. Bediako, why would you still be thinking that? So do call. We have our first call on the line. The number is 0302-211-691, extension 2. Jamal from Wa is our first caller. Jamal, good morning. Good morning. And thank you for joining us on the AM show. What are your thoughts well, personally, I must say we will actually give praises to God uh, mm. that these verses have actually arrived. And um, my concern is how the public actually takes this issue of vaccine. We've heard a lot of stories surrounding these vaccines. A lot of people saying after taking the vaccines, you'll be affected with HIV AIDS. Others also saying after taking the vaccines, if you are a man, your, your male organ does not function again, and so many things. So I think the leadership should actually take this up, like we stated. Um, they should they should get leave to the expectations as leaders. They should let us know. Um, indeed, they can also take a risk for us. So they should start with the vaccines. And when the public sees, okay, your president is taking the vaccine, our ministers are taking, our MPs and whatever, it will be easier to vaccinate everybody. So to me, I think personally, leadership should take this up. Start with it. Because before it gets to the grassroots. Right. Leadership by example. Thank you very much, Jamal, for sharing your thoughts. But that's what exactly um, 
Information Minister Designate Kojo Fonkroma has been saying some of them will take the shot publicly. Righteous is in Techiman. Uh, good morning to you, Righteous. Good morning, boss. Thank you for joining us. Um, You're welcome, sir. What are your quick thoughts? Any questions on your mind? What do you have to share with us this morning? Mine is a disappointment to the Council of State. Mm. They should have advised the president as their first job not to celebrate on this uh, vaccine. In this country, we are finding it difficult to even develop a vaccine. Now we have a vaccine that efficacy is 63.09%, and we are celebrating. Mm. I'm ashamed as a Ghanaian, and I'm also disappointed in the Council of State. Thank you. Thank you, but they, they, they just got, you know, inaugurated, if you like. Anyway, you would have wanted them to hit the ground running. Joachim from Savannah Region. Uh, Joachim, good morning to you. Thank you for connecting with us. Good morning. I'm, I'm first of all going to say we thank Almighty God for having this vaccine. Mm. But I'm a bit disappointed about how the whole country is taking or let me say the uh, part of the nation is taking it. We are seeing the negative aspect of it. It gets, it baffles me. I don't know why, up to now, we still don't believe in, in things that are not scientific. All these allegations they are raising about these vaccines, it, it baffles me. I am telling the uh, country that we need to take this. We need the herd immunity. We need to take the vaccines. It's unfortunate that we keep on spreading false news. We keep on saying things that are not real. And then the real thing, if the government hasn't gone for them, they'll say the government hasn't gone for them. Now they are here. And we keep spreading false news about vaccines. Mm. Which vaccine doesn't have side effects? Every vaccine has side effects. But you have to look at it. Which one will be better? Is it the side effects that you are looking at or what is coming to save the nation? I think that everybody should put that aside and take the vaccine. Right. It is something that has been tried, tested, and then proven that it is the best. Thank so you very much, uh, Joachim. Thank you, Joachim. Point well made. Let's connect with Fafa in Somanya. Fafa, good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. What are your thoughts? Well, I think that people should be educated more on the vaccine because there are lots of Ghanaians who basically think that it is some sort of both liquid from somewhere and it's going to like cause havoc and all of that. So I think that people should just educate Ghanaians more so that they'll go for you know the vaccine for the betterment of everybody. Right. Right. Thank you all for calling. And you can see the uh, shots on your screen with regard to uh, some members of the diplomatic community, also at the Kotokai International Airport. In fact, we just saw scenes of uh, the vaccines, uh, you know, all wrapped up being carted off to a specific location. In fact, you can still see that in your shot uh, currently. And that is ongoing live at the Kotokai International Airport. Uh, this is how we have actually received these vaccines. But a lot of you complaining about uh, the ceremonial uh, you know, aspect of it, saying it is needless. And uh, you know, some of you have been probing further to ask about the cost quotient involved. But let's connect with, now with Ba Kudus in Wa. Uh, ba, good morning to you. Good morning, sir. Your quick thoughts on I this think, matter. Um, Daniels, we need to be grateful that these vaccines have actually arrived at the right time. Um, good morning, sir. So I think you might have a gadget on radio or television and it's giving feedback. So if you could turn it off because there will be delay. And, and go ahead, Ma, with your thoughts. It appears we've lost. Ba, could you lower the volume on your set and go ahead with the interaction? Okay. Why don't they engage the civil society organizations to educate the average, like the interior people, that the vaccines are actually good for us? Well, looking at the middle people, the people who are a bit enlightened, knew that the vaccines are coming to help us, but not to cause any harm to us. But you see, we the civil society organizations are talent. Right. They have to be up and doing and then going to the interior communities where the, the, the radio stations are not reaching to, to tell them. People will just go there and tell them that it's no good. And the moment they see people coming to talk to them, they start running away to the bush. So I think um, they should look into that side and then we move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Is Graham from Mkoko our last caller? Graham, are you on the line? Yes. Okay, Graham, you're our final caller on this beat. Uh, your quick thoughts. Okay. Um, 
we want I want us to look at this story. The Britain and the England and the Americans are the ones suffering from this one. But why is it that they are bringing it to Africans first to, to be tested first before they use it? And if there's something that happens that they, they, want, they don't want to tell us. Right. Hello? Yes, I'm listening. Yeah. I Meaning there is something happening that they don't want to tell us. Even maybe what what really do you think is happening that they don't story. want to tell us? What do you think? Hello? Well, thank you, Graham, for sharing your thoughts. Um, you know, some people are still very skeptical about uh, receiving this uh, vaccine, but uh, quite a mob. Uh, I, my only concern now, looking at the crowd gathered, is social distancing. I am not seeing uh, practically no social distancing happening there. But we see uh, the health minister there, Kweku Ajiman Menu, the health minister designate, I should say, and um, some other... Uh, members addressing uh, the press there. Of course, you know that this is part of the relief, if you like, the package we are getting in Ghana as part of the global effort to curb the spread of the COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, there. So some interaction going on currently and the press fully present to cover the event. This is our live coverage of uh, the delivery of the first tranche of COVID-19 vaccines to Ghana, AstraZeneca uh, vaccines that we are getting, and frontline healthcare workers are going to be given prime of place as they are actually in the very thick of the pandemic, ensuring that we all stay healthy when we go to them and that we all stay Alive. Uh, would that we could actually catch a bit of what is being said uh, currently uh, there. But uh, the, the, those are things that we are subsequently going to uh, bring you. But definitely that first tranche, hundreds of thousands of the vaccine have arrived on our uh, land, on our soil, on our shores. And at least we know that the vaccination program is going to be implemented, implemented full throttle uh, soon, and that the drive to push back against the coronavirus will finally be initiated from the standpoint of vaccination. So all of that going down, happening currently at the Kotoka International Airport. And um, these representatives from different organizations uh, you know, global bodies, intergovernmental organizations featuring prominently and engaging the press. I see some police personnel there. I see media personnel. I see uh, delegates from the different uh, diplomatic missions. And I also see prominently there the health minister designate. Quick question, In your shot now, those vaccines that have just touched our shores and you just saw the COVAX, uh, prominently written on one end of the vaccines. You also see a heavy security presence there to ensure that uh, these vaccines are guarded and, of course, that uh, they will be able to be put to use for the purpose for which they have arrived right now. So the first batch of vaccines arriving at the Kotoka International Airport. And uh, that is the live feed, the live coverage we're bringing you Currently, I guess as a nation, we can at least for now say hooray because the drive indeed has commenced and you see all those uh, truckloads of vaccines that have been delivered. SWAT team from the Ghana Police Service featuring prominently uh, there and you can see them in their packaging at the airport. Yeah, exactly.
So still in your shot, those images of the vaccines. Uh, I was hoping that we would be able to connect and actually hear goings on right from there. We shall try to bring you that intermittently. But at least we can. Uh, at this point in time, we are seeing the live action. And we know for certain that the vaccines have touched down right here on our shores. Now, what remains to be done? The delivery, the targeting. As I interacted with Dr. Bidiako, one thing that became certain is that uh, we wouldn't even know which frontline worker would be getting a jab. He himself being a frontline worker, but not as a healthcare delivery person, but as a scientist at the very front, forefront of research into the coronavirus. So now we would want to uh, know if, if the, the information will be put out there, who and who uh, even among the frontline staff, are going to get a jab. And, and this would be the tricky end because then uh, we would target certain people and maybe some people may feel they also deserve a jab, while some others are not even willing uh, to take the jab. But all of these hurdles that I believe the officers in charge, the health ministry, the Ghana Health Service, is going to be able to address with time. So still ongoing at the Kotokai International Airport, those scenes with regard to the arrival of the vaccines. So let's just do a quick bit of education when it comes to the COVID-19 vaccination rollout plan as approved by the FDA. And so the vaccines that have been approved for use here in Ghana, two of them, the AstraZeneca vaccine, which is actually of Indian origin, and the Sputnik V or the Sputnik V from Russia. And in terms of the mass immunization, like we're seeing, as was announced, between March and October this year. In fact, March was a key month mentioned, and June or July also mentioned. So by October, this between now, that is uh, the end of the month, March to October, the rollout uh, should actually hit the ground. But in terms of coverage, the targets, 260 uh, MMDAs, Metropolitan, Municipal and District Assemblies, 260 of them being targeted by way of coverage. Then in terms of the vaccinators, those who are going to be doing the vaccination proper, we're looking at 12,500 officers who are going to be actually uh, putting, uh, you know, bringing to bear the vaccinations. Then in terms of supervision, there are 2,000 supervisors and the volunteers aiding the effort, 37,413, 37,000. 413. Mind you, this would not be the first time that Ghana is embarking on a vaccination uh, program. We have vaccinated for polio, among others, and so we have a solid, a strong vaccination system on the ground. What remains to be seen is how that can be roped in to ensure that when it comes to COVID-19 and the vaccinations, we'll be able to uh, fall on this same experience we have to ensure that the process is as smooth and as efficient as uh, possible. Certain members of the diplomatic corps you're seeing on uh, your screen right there. And uh, my concern, social distancing. But they are all in masks, so at least that's one good thing. Uh, it appears they are posing for some photo ops, and uh, that is what is happening currently with... Um, that delivery of the first batch of vaccines. But back to the data. And in terms of those who are going to be getting the jabs, we're looking at healthcare workers, first of all, those on the front line, healthcare workers. Then there are frontline security personnel. Even in these institutions, there are security personnel who are also exposed. And if they are not treated as well, we could be fighting a losing battle, earning a Pyrrhic victory. And so healthcare workers targeted, then frontline security personnel as well also uh, targeted next. Then following suit, persons with known underlying medical conditions. Persons with known underlying medical conditions.
conditions, and we know them. I mean, the, the blood pressure issues, the diabetes, and the other comorbidities, in fact, asthma and all of that. Such people are exposed even more because any, you know, if, if they contract the virus, it could be deadly to them because they already have these underlying health concerns. And um, so those are, that's another category of people that is being targeted. The third layer. Then you go to those 60 plus uh, people above 60, 60 plus elderly people. They are also being targeted. And we know that some people are more susceptible to this virus. And so uh, these people also being targeted, the elderly uh, in society, because the, of certain uh, risks that are posed to them. And then we have frontline members of the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary, the three arms of government, some frontline members of these three major arms of government. Someone might be asking, how about the fourth realm, the media? We are the, uh, well, you should say, maybe de facto, not de jure, uh, fourth arm of government or the fourth estate. But I guess um, with the rollout, we would get to see some media people as well getting in there. So th those are the groups, healthcare workers, frontline security personnel, persons with known underlying medical conditions, 60 plus elderly people, and then frontline members of the executive, legislature, and judiciary. Something you should take stock of. Vaccines would be administered in three phases with each person taking two doses. Now, what we are giving, this specific vaccine, calls for two doses. Like Dr. Bediako indicated a short while ago, if you don't get the double jab, you are still at risk. You could be, if you get only one shot, you could be at about maybe 26%, 30% effectiveness uh, against the virus. But when you get the second jab, you will get uh, over 80% uh, of the uh, jab. So uh, that is the information, something we should actually take note of when it comes to these vaccines. And more and more of them being brought in, more and more of them being carted off. But let's take a quick look at the current uh, situation when it comes to covid 19 in Ghana. And the latest number of cases so far, 486, with the active cases being 6,614. So we have 6,614 active cases, uh, with the latest number of cases or additional cases being 486. If you just take a quick look at the regional breakdown, you would see that a chunk of the total figure, the cumulative cases per region, uh, you would notice that the Great Accra region, uh, the region with the capital, is still on top with over 46,000 of those cases. Then uh, the Ashanti region follows with quite a gap, 14,000. Then we have the Western region with 4,915, the Eastern region with 3,610, Central 2,833, Volta with 1,644, the northern region with 1,131. And more regions to come, Bono East, 1,099, Upper East, 994, Bono Region, 949, Western North Region, 797, Ahafo, 663, the Upper West, 374, Oti, 272, the Northeast Region, 79, and the Savannah Region with the lowest tally there of 70. And so the major hotspots being the Great Accra region and the Ashanti uh, region so far. So 81,245 cases in uh, total. The recoveries or those who have been discharged so far, 74,047. 74,047. So when you do the subtraction, then you get the 6,614 that we are looking at so far. A few more people have succumbed, lost their lives to this virus. We're talking of 
584 people. 584 people. And that is the reality. It is no joking matter. When you take a quick look at the gender distribution, you would find that there are more males contracting the coronavirus compared to females. And so there's a 58% distribution of males who have actually got the virus and females, uh, 42%. Now, this is all inclusive of those who have recovered or been discharged and those who have actually passed on meeting their maker. And that is the distribution so far when it comes to Ghana and our statistics, uh, and at least today, making some progress with this batch of COVID-19 vaccines that we've actually taken delivery of. So still scenes from uh, the Kotoka International Airport. Not much of a ceremony we are seeing, just um, a number of officials headed by the health minister designate, Kwekwajiman Menu, who has actually been there interacting with some members of diplomatic missions and uh, the press as well, hearing from them. We see some members of the press uh, taking shots there. We also see security personnel. And now the vaccines are being loaded into what would be storage systems. Uh, the vaccines are being loaded into what uh, would be seen to be storage systems. Uh, the first, very first box being carted off into uh, that truck that we see there being loaded uh, off as we see in our shot. And so the vaccines are here and we are going to be using the vaccines and now at least we can breathe easy, maybe slightly more, slightly more when it comes to protecting our citizenry. Those are the forefront. We've heard a lot of healthcare professionals on the front line complaining about even the lack of access to PPE, simple PPE, masks and other protective gear. And so when they are given these shots, as many of them as are able to get the shots, uh, we can be sure that there would be more protection for them and uh, subsequently more protection for all of us as well. We can breathe easy a bit. More scenes from the Kotoka International Airport and uh, it's still all to do with the first batch of vaccines arriving uh, there. It, it was promised to arrive uh, today in the early hours of today. Maybe a bit of a slight delay, but the vaccines indeed have arrived. And as you can see, they are being carted off now into storage uh, systems for forwarding to whichever other places they will be taken to for onward distribution.
there are people running around ensuring everything is going according to plan and the the main boxes containing the smaller boxes of vaccines uh, being opened the officials in charge uh, you know following the protocols and ensuring that these boxes actually are loaded and get into the storage system that we can all see in our shot so one of those huge boxes has been emptied and the next one actually being prepared for emptying as well and we saw a number of these uh, you know uh, boxes the, the huge ones that you can see in your shot the netting going to be taken off and then uh, the contents of them going to be passed on we have Manuel Coranting my colleague uh, live from the Kotoka International Airport. Manuel, uh, what can you report from the Kotoka International Airport? What, what have been the scenes so far? We've seen them. What has been said by the officials? What can you report from there? Um, yeah, so um, Benjamin, I've been here for quite a while. And in fact, uh, just as you were recapping, um, the vaccines just touched down and they're actually now being wheeled into um, the cold storage system, but these are mobile um, cold storage facilities, which uh, will be containing the vac vaccines up until when they are ready to be deployed and as it were administered across the country. We're told that some 600,000 um, vaccines uh, touched down today under the COVAX facility, uh, being co-led uh, by Gavi, which is a global alliance for um, vaccines, particularly um, COVID-19 vaccines. And, and, and indeed, it's worth noting, uh, Benjamin, that Ghana is the first country in Africa to take delivery of the uh, AstraZeneca under the COVAX facility. And so across the entire continent, we are taking the first batch of doses, um, which will, uh, we are told by the, the health minister that um, vaccination will start early in March, sometime next week. And so just, just as you're seeing, and as I uh, move a bit closer, uh, these are the uh, cold storage facilities. And, and we were told by Dr. Kwame Aponsa Achiano, who is the head of the expanded immunization um, program in Ghana, that this has actually been triggered across the entire country in over uh, 260 districts. And so all across the country. This is not going to be what you've seen in the USA, where people drive into vaccination points to take the shots. Um, there, there's actually a campaign which is being rolled out to take the vaccines to the recipients, so in rural areas and so on and so forth. Um, it's also quite instructive to note that um, the emphasis, or if you like, the focal point of vaccination in Ghana, at least at its initial stages, with these 600,000 doses of uh, the AstraZeneca, which is produced by the uh, Serum Institute uh, of India, are going to be started from the Greater Accra region, and then the uh, Ashanti region, and then Western region. Uh, the, the head of public health, the director of public health at Ghana Health Service, Dr. Esedu um, Bequin, mentions that some areas around Kaswa would also uh, be given priority. And just maybe I should take you through the um, you know the groups the groups that are going to be giving um, um, priority in the rollout of the vaccination. We are told that people with underlying conditions. We are told that frontline health workers. We are told also that frontline security personnel, the media, and some frontline government officials also are going to be taking the shots. And at this point, I, I, is this um, okay for me to say that? Um, the health minister announced that the president himself uh, will be taking the first shot of the vaccines as we have um, taken delivery of this morning. And so all the, the, the partners, UNICEF, Gavi, um, uh, the EU, and I've, I've seen uh, Diana Concha, who is the head of the EU in Ghana here also. Um, I've seen the Excellency Stephanie Sullivan, who is the... Um, Ambassador of the United States to Ghana also here. The British High Commissioner was also here. And so indeed, we've seen some level of partnership from the diplomatic community uh, in solidarity with Ghana as it's taking the first uh, batch of the vaccines. And emphasizing again, 600,000 of those have been delivered. And I'll just turn around and show you 
now what is happening here. We are seeing the vaccines in boxes and they came with syringes and all the other ancillary um, equipment needed for the administration of the vaccines. And now they are being wheeled into the uh, storage facility. So Benjamin, this is essentially what we are seeing here at uh, the at Kotoka International Airport where we just uh, took delivery of 600,000 doses of um, AstraZeneca, or if you like the COVID shield um, vaccines in Ghana expected to be rolled out in terms of vaccination sometime next week, Ben. Uh, Manuel, l let me just find out from you. We saw a lot of interaction between uh, the health minister designate among, uh, you know, some of those other names that you've mentioned, the members of the diplomatic uh, corps. Uh, what can you share with us about the sort of interactions they have had so far? What have they been saying? Um, so essentially the... the <laughs> Uh, he can tell us with regard to uh, what has been said by some of these officials. It would be interesting to know what sort of uh, conversations they have had, what sort of things they have been sharing uh, with the media on the back of this engagement. But those live scenes, we're going to be uh, bringing you more of those. Today is D-Day ahead of March when distribution proper is going to be uh, commencing when it comes to this vaccine. Now, between March and October, the rollout uh, will take place, and hopefully as many Ghanaians as possible will actually be vaccinated. As we know, uh, we need at least uh, to hit the threshold of 60 or as much as 75 percent of our population. Some have estimated about uh, 20 million of our population, 20 to 22 million, to be able to hit that threshold where we can start talking about herd immunity. And so those are uh, the scenes that we've been bringing you uh, this morning from the Kotoka International Airport. So the first tranche of about 600,000 vials or vaccines, uh, AstraZeneca vaccines to be specific, from India uh, coming to Ghana under the COVAX uh, program. And at least we know some critical people in the fight, uh, the chain of fighting COVID-19 are actually going to be getting their initial jabs, including the frontline healthcare workers. So we take a bit of a breather here. We'll be right back with more on the AM Show. Do stay.